Hey, what's going on reef builders? I decided to put together a bonus video on a lot of the corals that I saw at Reef of Palooza Orlando uh, because the Reef Palooza video uh, covering the entire show was uh, so well received I decided I'd throw a little bit more eye candy your way. So one thing I want to point out is I'm not going to mention any particular vendor names. It's really focused on the corals and I'm really looking at corals that uh, appeal the most to me. So uh, sticks and zoanthids are you know really small and hard to film so um, I'm really going to just show off some of the uh, really photogenic corals and uh, right off the bat um, this one right here was an awesome presentation of encrusting corals. So you're looking at Leptoceras, Samacora, Cyphastria, Favites, um, a little to a lesser degree, maybe some uh, Goniastria. But um, I've seen these kind of displays right here of encrusting corals before. And um, there's just such a colorful group of corals. There's a few vendors that specialize in the encrusting corals. And they're always a really great value for uh, the brightness of the corals that you get. So I've loosely grouped uh, the corals I want to present to you and uh, next up is going to be some uh, Australian Scalenia, also known as Homophilia australis. This was a really interesting piece that kind of had a, a golden sheen to it, but the uh, Siamese polyp with uh, two polyps basically growing right next to each other and blended tissue. Uh, that was one coral that definitely got my attention. Um, another spread that really uh, I enjoyed very much is um, some just really brilliant war paint, bleeding apple, and UFO style uh, scolies. Um, the prices on these, I don't really want to comment too much, but um, if you shop around, uh, you can really usually find uh, some better prices on uh, different scolies. Uh, these were probably the showstopper uh, Scolemia australis, sorry, Homophilia australis of Reef Blues Orlando 2021. I'm just a sucker for orange, any scolies that has orange or yellow. So that specimen that had the yellow ring with the orange uh, tissue um, was really 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 a showstopper now these corals had prices that were uh, definitely not priced to move and you see this sometimes with uh, vendors who have a coral that they personally particularly love and they'll just kind of have you know a pie in the sky uh, price on it but these two made a really awesome pair um, I already have a really nice uh, yellow uh, UFO um, so it's kind of dark with the yellow ring like that one inside but less green on the outside and I already have kind of a solid orange Australian scoli uh, like this one right here but um, it doesn't have that nice yellow ring so this, those those two were worth looking at and I, I came back to them uh, over and over again and here you see pretty much a classic master UFO scoli with just like everything but the kitchen sink um, in its color, its pattern, and its appearance. Uh, these guys are just such awesome corals. As you know, Euphilia are as popular as they've ever been, and there's so many different colors, it's hard for one to stand out. But this particular specimen with the green tentacles and the orange tips that were kind of mottled, um, this is a unique color morph that I, I've only seen a few times. So I feel like this was one of the most exciting Euphilia and Cora or hammer corals of the show. And man, it's like you can just totally get lost in the torch corals. Don't forget about the name. You know, there's yellow, green tentacles with blue tips. Uh, a more solid yellow with light pistachio tips and then a, a deeper yellow green version with kind of bluer tips and uh, again don't get lost in the names just you know just buy the coral that you like and there's just so many torch corals out there and moving right along this was a really really eye-catching blastomusa with the dark mouth the orange mantle with those yellow vesicles really really an awesome piece um, it, it definitely had a price to match and not every blastomusa is is worth uh, you know spending a real um, truckload of money on but this would be a really good example of a good broodstock colony so I, I've, I've never really been great at growing big chunky blastomusa wells eye um, but you know, every now and then there's just someone who can do it better than you. And so these are actually traded in to a local store and you can see the uh, with and without uh, filters of the exact same frags. In this case, um, with the filter, the delicate yellow golden internal coloration is actually kind of uh, blown out. So you can't really appreciate that. So sometimes you want to see the corals without those special filters. 
Um, another group of corals that's just always, always just gonna grab your attention are the Cinerina lacrimalis and the closely related Endophilia. Um, so these occur in just about every single color you can think of. You know, basically they can be brown, green, or pink, but then some of them are translucent with yellow inside or with green inside, and then they can have a, a different degree of uh, striping to them. And uh, just over here on the side, you can see a couple nice little disc corals, um, but I got a few more uh, Cinerina to show you. So when they start getting a little bit more convoluted like that, we tend to start calling them endophilia. Um, no one really knows if that's a real name, but it definitely helps to describe what they are. Uh, trackies, uh, as you know, they are also having a moment, all kinds of colors with prices to match. But sometimes you want to get back to the basics of just, you know, nice little red ring with some black accents to really make it pop. This is the kind of coral that's going to grab your attention from across the room. By far, this was the most sensational sin arena at Reef Palooza Orlando this year. The beautiful, beautiful pink specimen with some kind of blue stripes across the mouth, but then it had these green vesicles around the rim. I totally would have splurged on this particular piece um, if I didn't already have nine or ten pieces in my collection, but um, I'm glad I got a really good video of it just to uh, remind myself of some uh, some strains of sin arena to uh, aspire to, so really, really awesome awesome specimen I kept coming back to. And like I said, there's a lot of zoanthids, a lot of frags, a lot of sticks, but it's just so much easier to film some of these large, meaty, showy uh, acanthophilias, meat or donut corals. Um, one company in particular had a huge spread of very chunky, very meaty corals, uh, lots of acanthophilias and cinerinas and a few weirdos in between. Um, this particular their booth uh, definitely <laughs> definitely had uh, a, a good representation of acanthophilias, endophilias, and cinerinas uh, with prices to match, but they all actually looked the part in real life without any kind of uh, filter to them. Uh, that gold acanthophilia it might not be as showy as some of the uh, splashy red and green varieties, um, but definitely a lot more rare. Stay to the end because I got a special one uh, locked, lined up for you to see at the very end. Um, this particular booth, again, with the uh, Acanthophilias and Cinerinas, but uh, here in a moment, I'm going to zoom into uh, top right corner, and this meat coral was so freaking huge. I mean, uh, it must have been approaching 12 inches in diameter. I mean, it looked like if you pulled it out it might uh, you know leak out up to a half a gallon of water as the polyp deflated and uh, here's a closer look at the orange acanthophilia so it's not like screaming orange like you might see in some other uh, Australian scolies from time to time um, but that color morph is really really nice and here's that super giant like almost edible it's almost like a beefsteak of donut coral again it's funny how corals like this uh, gold or orange tip uh, elegance are on your radar until you get one. And so I kind of, you know, every now and then I'll take a snapshot of them. But one elegance that I'd love to add to my collection is one of these truly red Catalophilia jardinii. Um, this specimen, I swear he was pooping all weekend, um, but he had a really nice rosy red appearance to the inside of its uh, overall convoluted polyp with brighter red mouth. Um, the tentacles weren't, you know, Know, exactly super splashy and you know the first times I saw these in, in pictures I thought for sure it wasn't real but through the years I've actually been able to, to appreciate um, the true redness of some of these red elegance coral and so um, this is definitely a strain of this particular coral that I'm excited to add my to my collection sometime in the future and uh, here's a short clip of what everybody calls an orange lamb lobo with the acantho acanthastria pachycepta this coral is extremely hardy but extremely aggressive so you got to be really careful where you place it again it's an acan not a lobophilia now this is another coral that I, I have this rule about certain corals if I think about buying it 
three times on the third time, you know, if the price is right, I'll definitely go back and pick it up. And this is um, commonly mislabeled as a uh, um, Homophilia bauer banki, but I do believe it's an undescribed species of colonial micromusa, and it only comes from Tonga, and I have never seen one with those uh, puffy green stripes. They're usually just red or green with a little bit of gray splatter to them. So seeing one with uh, the green stripes, uh, that was a nice treat, and I brought it home. This is a very rare coral called Rhizotrochus typus, and it's a non-photosynthetic uh, stony coral that behaves pretty much just like an anemone with a skeleton. So unlike some other NPS corals, this one is really unfussy, but because they're very large and showy, uh, they're usually in very high demand. It's been a very long time since I've seen one, and this one is a, an excellent example that I was lucky enough to catch with all of its polyps extended. Um, now, you could be forgiven for thinking that this was a cyclocyrus, and technically it is, but you can tell by the really fine ridges in the corelite that this is probably a very round specimen of a coral that used to be called a diaceris. Um, another coral that was really nice to see is what's being referred to as the Holy Grail Micromusa. Um, I first saw these at an exporter in Bali and uh, he told me they came from the southern coast of uh, Jakarta and uh, once upon a time these things were really really rare but a lot of these smaller coral propagators uh, have been working really hard and there were a lot of booths selling them. Uh, moving right along, we have some nice, neat, bicolored uh, Goniopora, and you can see that there's a little bit of pink and slightly orange side. Um, so whoever produced these did a really good job of incorporating both of the colorations into uh, their frags. Very similar to the Goniopora or the Bernard Pora. So these are known as short tentacle Goni, um, but they're in fact a totally different group of coral that usually has pretty short tentacles. And maybe a few of the tentacles will be greatly exaggerated because they can be quite aggressive to neighboring corals. And you know, the only zoanthid that really gets my attention these days are the large showy Palithoa grandis. So um, here's a couple frags. I do believe I picked up a, one of these frags of a solid green because I've been going after the crazy style uh, Palithoa grandis for almost 10 years, so I needed a few more of yeah, the slightly more common type, um, you know, some supporting actors for my ultra uh, Palithoa grandis. And uh, this was really neat right here. I've called these fungia trees in the past, and this is a Heliofungia fralinae. And that's a species of disc coral that commonly um, will die back on one side and produce all of these dutter polyps um, on the sides. And these can break off. Um, a lot of times when they're small, they can be orange, and they might be called like a wagon wheel fungia. But unfortunately, as they get bigger, they do get a lot more normal. So here is the special surprise that I was saving till the end. Um, this was an exquisite, exquisite uh, acanthophilia at the show. Um, I, I was gonna take a gamble on this coral because this is what it looked like before it suffered um, a high alkalinity episode. Um, so the, the price was a little bit prohibitive, but this is by far the most neon rainbow with red splatter acanthophilia I've ever seen. So I hope you guys enjoy this uh, little bonus video of some of the uh, standout corals reef palooza. Like I said, there's a lot more variety than what I showed here, but I th just wanted to share with you some of the corals that got my attention. So uh, thanks for joining me and we'll catch you guys on the next one.